everyone. Welcome to Marie's Scrappy Creations, where we sew the scraps of your life into beautiful creations. I have been most of the day thinking about doing this video. Um, it's really rough. I won't get into the reasons why, other than to say that we have had a family tragedy that we learned of this morning. So what I'm going to do today for What's Up Wednesday is something that I filmed uh, a week or two ago. Uh, it's about sorting scraps or how I a little bit source, sort scraps. Uh, so I apologize. I don't have a word of the day because I don't have a word that could describe today. And if I don't get to the comments, I apologize. I, I did go in earlier today to try to take my mind off things and I, I worked on some of the comments, but if I don't get to you, it's nothing personal. I'll get to them when I can. I'm not really keeping up on Facebook page group right now. Um, I'm going to do my best to do a Sunday tutorial, but we'll see how that happens. I can't promise anything at this point, but, uh, right now I, I really thought that I was going to film something today for you guys and that it would help take my mind off things, but I found it very hard to do anything today. So um, I'll see how the rest of the week goes. But for now, I do hope you enjoy the content that I do put up and I thank you guys for always being so kind and understanding. And I might see you Sunday. I. I really can't say at this point. So, all right, you all take care. Thanks for watching and I'll talk soon. All right, bye-bye. I was sorting out some scraps today and then it, it hit me that I should be filming this because so many of you have asked how I sort my scraps. So first of all, I am not the most organized person when it comes to scraps. You would think I would be since they're my thing, but I, I do have a system and I'm going to show you what it is. Now, that being said, I have seen some scrap savers on my Facebook group and they put me to shame because mine are not like that, but this is my system. So this little basket from the Dollar Tree sits underneath my, my sewing table. So it's basically my machine is, is right on top. Like my machine is right here and this is on a shelf underneath. So this is where the scraps go first. Okay. If I cut something off, I, I throw it in there, you know, when I'm snipping away at the sewing machine. And I also bring this here to the cutting mat so that when I'm trimming things up, this is it. So this is the first place they go to be sorted from here. Okay. So after this, which I'm not going to sort them in front of you, but I'm going to throw these around to the side. After that, they go into a few different containers. Now, first off, before I get into the smaller scraps, I'm going to show you my basket. Okay, now this is smaller pieces, uh, smaller than a quarter yard. Okay, they're folded up as neatly as I can, and I keep them in here. And every once in a while, I have to go through and reposition because they they do get out of sorts. And one of these days, I would like to color coordinate them. But right now, I really don't have the time for that. But these are smaller than a quarter yard. So some good pieces that would be going in there would be things like this, pieces like this, okay? I've set a few here that I need to fold to go in there. So you get the general drift of what goes in my basket. And these are good for some of them, you know, they'll line a coin purse. Some of them are big enough to line one of my open wide zippered bags. You know, um, it just depends on the size. And then, oops, that's another one that goes in there. Then I have these pieces. And these aren't big enough for that. 
okay so that's these are the ones that you know I have a whole bucket of these but I, I use this basket because this is my first line of defense is what I think of it so they go in here first when this gets full I have a bucket that I put them into and then there's this one now this one is crumbs and because I'm getting ready to make a crumb block I've got them thrown in here and as you can see there are a few strips in here because when I'm sewing uh, crumbs I do like to have some strips okay but most of my strips go into this basket which is my postcard basket okay so most of these are strips of varying width some of them are narrow some of them are pieces that i cut off from something else but these are all strips oops and pieces of postcards <laughs> but you get the drift oh while i'm right here if you watch the postcard tutorial you saw that i mentioned you don't want to buy cheap cardstock this is cheap cardstock how bendy that is that's terrible that was cardstock and I don't buy that anymore so anyway that's what that was but anyway um, as you can see these are all strips narrow strips and some of them are really narrow like like this but anything goes anything goes into those strips then there's this bucket and these are my salvage edges and I save anything it doesn't matter if it just says cotton I'll save that but of course my favorites have things like that one's from some chick fabric so that had all the little chicks on it which was really cute and oh there's some with stars on it I made my mom a set of pot holders with that fabric uh, <laughs> But yeah, some of them are interesting. And what I like about them, whether they're just plain like this, or whether they maybe say something on them, I like to use those on postcards and as decorative pieces on bags. So I started saving these about a year, year and a half ago. So I haven't really saved a lot of them at this point. But I do have now two people who said they would save me their salvage edges. So thank you to both of those people. You know who you are. Okay, and is there more scraps? Of course there is. I'm going to put these to the side somewhere so that I can show you the next one. The next one is this. Now, cat litter came in there. So... At first, when someone told me you could store fabric in these, I really wasn't sure because cat litter is scented. I mean, I know there's nothing dirty that comes in there. It's clay. It's clean. And I do wash these out, but you know there is no scent to these pails whatsoever. So I wash it all out with some Top Job, Mr. Clean, whatever I have. So this is <laughs> a little bit of everything. So... When I have time, maybe I'm on a video chat with someone or I'm on the phone, I can sort these scraps. I haven't recently because I have two of these pails. But at least I'm, I'm telling you, I'm confessing. <laughs> I have two of these full of these kind of scraps. And recently I started doing this. Now these are children's prints. And I haven't done it for very long, but now when I sort through scraps, it doesn't matter what size. If they're a children's print, they go into this bucket. I don't really know why I'm doing that, other than I thought possibly some crumb or crazy blocks done with children's fabric. But also, you know, putting a scrap quilt together like an I Spy quilt, this would be a good way to start, you know, from something like that. If you were here for my postcard tutorial last week, I showed how I decorate some of my postcards with heat and bond. 
So I keep this, which is my heat and bond scraps that have, you know, if the heat and bond is already on the fabric, like this. Okay, the heat and bond is on there. So this is full of pieces of heat and bond. I've got some Christmas stuff in there. I've got hearts. I've got different shapes that I cut out over time for reasons. You know, and you don't know when you might need that. So this has really come in handy. And at first I wasn't sure if it would or not. But that has been great to keep my stitching or my heat and bond pieces together. So that's just the fabric that has that on there. So the next thing I'm going to be working with are my crumbs. So this is the one I leave out. And like I said, I do leave some strips in there. And if, if you go ahead and you watch my tutorial on crumbs, you'll see why I use strips. So I don't put all the strips into my postcard bin. Of course, it's not just a postcard bin either because I've been known to make quite a few strip quilts, you know, uh, coin quilts, there's all different names. Plus the ladder block, like I showed on last week's What's Up Wednesday, you use varying widths of strips for that. Boy, I tell you, there is some tongue twisters around the word strip and scrap and all that. <laughs> so anyway, that's kind of how I do it. I start... I start with this, you know, everything goes in this. And from here, that's, I would say that's where the magic happens. But I really don't feel like I'm as organized as I could be. But I'm working towards it. I'm working towards it. So I would love to hear how you organize your scraps. And if you're not a member of our Facebook page, I would invite you to come on over and join us there's a link down in the description box but if you go to facebook you can search it marie scrappy creations and the word of the day today is going to be spider-man you see how i do that i'll just grab anything any keyword works as long as it's something people can use in the comments section but anyway um so that is a little glimpse into my, <laughs> actually, I don't, I don't organize very well, but this, this kind of answers the questions that I have been asked, which is how do I store my scraps? Well, you're looking at it, not very well, <laughs> but I'm getting there. And you know, with the amount of scraps I have, it's not going to happen overnight. It just isn't. I've got too many scraps. And, oh, speaking of that, I have more scraps because, you know, <laughs> I forgot. These are my two and a half inch strips. And then I have these scraps, which were sent to me in a swap from my quilt group. We did a... a um, I can't think of the word. Yeah, a scrap swap <laughs> there we go if i can get it out and so my partner sent me this beautiful bag and i have yet to use it because i want to make it something that i don't know what the word would be yes i want to be proud of it but i want to make something fantastic because she went through her scraps which let's let's be honest those are memories so she went through and she gave me all these memories from projects that she's made and so I would really like to honor that in a good way. So I haven't decided what I'm using that for, but I keep it handy so that I'm always reminded that I have them. And I want to thank you for taking a look. And if you haven't already, please feel free to subscribe to my channel. Please click the like. But if you do subscribe, don't forget to click the bell and then Go up at the top after the bell. You have to go up and click the black that says all. Or otherwise, you won't get your notifications when I put out a new video. We can't have that, can we? <laughs> okay, thank you for taking a look. And until next time, you take care. Dig out those scraps. Dig deep. Grab them. Get sewing. You know you want to.